Human microbiome. Microbiome is a community of microorganisms um, such as fungi, bacteria, or viruses that exist in a particular host. In humans, the term is often used to describe the microorganisms that live in or on the human body. Other names for microbiome are microbiota and normal flora. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to Madzikhrif. Today we are going to discuss human microbiome, which is also called normal flora or microbiota in detail. But before starting the lecture, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comment section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Members of normal flora are low virulence organisms. Virulence is the severity and harmfulness of a disease. So normal flora organisms are of low virulence, which means that their ability to cause a disease is very low. Human microbiome also includes the genetic compositions of these organisms. For example, if a virus is a part of human microbiome, it's DNA, or if it's an RNA virus, it's RNA. It will also be a part of the microbiome. Blood, CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid present in our spinal cord, and urine, our internal body organs such as heart, kidneys, liver, etc. These are sterile. They do not contain any of these organisms like bacteria, fungi, protozoa, viruses, etc. But if any of these microorganisms enter into these places, into the organs, into urine, CSF, or blood, it means this is now a diseased condition. Lecture outline. I have introduced you guys to the normal flora. I will be talking about its origin, the mode of transmission, factors that can affect the normal flora, the relationship of microorganisms with the host, and how many types of normal flora are there, and what are their anatomic locations, what can be the effects, either positive or negative. So we'll talk about that and what types of infections are caused by normal flora if they cause any infection and at the end as usual we'll review the lecture origin during birth from vagina and outside environment environment includes air food and blankets or the hands of the physicians who are involved in delivering the baby normal flora's composition depends on the mode of delivery if it is SVD, spontaneous vaginal delivery, or a C-section, the cesarean section, it depends on that. If it is delivered through SVD, the microorganisms of vagina will become part of the normal flora of the baby. If it is delivered through C-section, so this baby will lick those organisms that are present in the normal flora of the baby who was delivered through SVD. So the babies delivered through SVDs, their normal flora is different from the babies delivered through the c-section modes of transmission if it is transmitted vertically like from top to bottom um we normally call vertical things like from top to bottom and from right to left or left to right we term these things as horizontal so if it is transferred from mother to offspring so it is sort of a vertical transmission and if it is transferred from one person to another, that is the horizontal transmission. Okay, let me tell you one important term here, that is carrier. When a person recovers from a disease, the normal flora will gain a new microorganism in its composition, that microorganism who is responsible for causing the disease. But this microorganism is not a part of normal flora of other people around that person. So this person will act as a carrier for all those people, which means that it can cause infection in those people. But this person is rec has recovered. Factors that can affect normal flora that include age with the passage of time a person grows so their normal flora will definitely change um, diet can also affect if someone is taking more sugar in their diet this is going to change the normal microbiota of their oral cavity and geographic locations can also cause a difference in the normal flora the normal flora of the person living in the u.s will be different from the person living in china because of their uh, climate, because of their culture, and also their diet. And gender. 
the normal flora of uh, both the genders, the male and the female, is different, if not much, but maybe slightly. Immune conditions. If a person is immunocompetent, normal flora is normal, but if a person is immunocompromised, the normal flora can lead to diseased conditions disease as i talked about the carrier state so a person recently recovered from the disease will be carrier of that disease and that organism responsible for causing the disease is now a part of the normal flora but for the other person it is not pregnancy can also change the composition of normal flora smoking smoking can change the composition of the oral microbiota and use of antibiotics can also lead to flora disequilibrium because antibiotics are responsible for killing the microorganisms, so it will kill some of the bacteria, it will lead to a change in the normal flora. Relationship of the microorganisms with host. There is one main relationship that is called symbiosis, but I've written two there. One symbiosis and the other one is opportunistic. Symbiosis has got mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Opportunistic is a sort of parasitism, but it is different from that. We'll talk about that. Symbiosis is a relationship between two different species. For example, if you consider a human being and a bacteria. These organisms are now called symbionts because they've got a relationship with each other and these live together. And they are now partners. And bo if both the partners get benefit, this relation is symbiosis. For example, E. coli, it is a bacteria that is a permanent resident of our intestinal tract. It produces vitamin K that helps in coagulation by producing chlorine factors and vitamin B that helps in digestion. And in return, human provides shelter and optimal environment to E. coli. So this type of relationship is symbiosis. Mutualism. It is the relationship between two different species. It is a long-term relationship in which uh, both the partners get benefit. It is a type of symbiotic relationship. So the example of uh, E. coli and the human beings can fit better in that relationship. As its name shows that, it is a mutual relationship between both the partners. Commensalism. It is also a type of symbiotic relationship uh, between two different species in which one partner is benefited. That is called commensal. And the other partner is nor benefited, neither harmed. That is host. For example, Staphylococcus, that's a bacteria that is present on human skin. It is getting benefit. Like it is getting the shelter, it is getting the optimal environment and nutrition from human skin. But in return, it is not uh, leading to any harm or any benefit that human will get from it. Parasitism. The, it is a type of relationship between two species in which one partner gets benefit while the other partner is harmed. Right? So, as I told you that Opportunistic relationship is similar to parasitism. Let me clear it there. Opportunistic relationship is a relationship between two different species. Under normal conditions, these microbes do not cause disease. For example, um, e. coli it is present normally in our gastrointestinal tract. It does not cause disease there, but in turn, it helps us. It produces vitamin K and vitamin B, which are which are important for us. In certain situations, these microorganisms become pathogenic. If E. coli gets the opportunity to get into the urinary tract, it will lead to UTI. Types of normal flora. There are two major types of normal flora. One is resident and the other one is transient. Resident flora, as its name shows that it is a permanent resident living in and on our body. It is always present on the body, which is also termed as permanent flora. It is acquired rapidly during or after birth. These microorganisms are more stable. They are non-pathogenic but opportunistic. Opportunistic means when they find an opportunity to become pathogenic or to cause a disease, they will definitely avail that opportunity. They can also reestablish themselves. If something happens and that removes a normal flora that's a resident from our body, that normal flora will reestablish itself. Transient flora. As its name shows that, transient means temporary. So they will live in our own body for a short time period like hours, days, or weeks. After that, they will move or die off. Transient flora varies from time to time and environment to environment. Reasons why transient flora cannot stay for long. 
The competition with other microorganisms like resident flora will not allow transient flora to live for long in the place the resident flora is living. And elimination by our body's defense mechanism, our immune system will say this is not a part of our body normally, so why is present there? So it will definitely remove it. Um, it without caring that transient flora is not causing any disease. And certain chemical or physical changes in our body can also lead to the short stay of transient flora. Anatomic locations. Um, the anatomic locations of normal flora include skin, eye, mainly conjunctiva, respiratory tract that also include oral cavity, nose, mouth, GI tract, the gastrointestinal tract, and genitourinary system or tract. Microorganisms that are normally present on our skin and are part of our normal flora include Cornibacterium, Propneobacterium acne, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, and one fungus, that is yeast. Eyes. The number of normal flora present in our eyes is small. Blinking and tears constantly remove them and some of the skin flora can also be present in our eyes normal flora. The microorganisms that form our eyes normal flora are Staphylococcus epidermidis, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus pneumonia, non-hemolytic strapped or staph bacteria, Cornibacterium diphtheroid or xerosis and Moraxilla species. Let's talk about the respiratory tract. Nose includes Streptococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Viridin streptococci, Cornibacterium, and Haemophila species. Mouth includes Viridin streptococci, Echinella corridans, Lactobacillus, and Neisseria species, along with Staphylococcus epidermidis and Candida albicans. All of these are bacteria, but this one is fungus. The normal flora of throat include Viridin streptococci, Haemophilus influenza, Neisseria species, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Streptococcus pyogens, and pneumonia along with Bacteroides species. In GI, we'll discuss first small intestine and then we'll talk about the colon, the large intestine. Normal flora of small intestine include Streptococci, Lactobacilli, and yeast. These two are bacteria, but this one is fungus. The normal flora of colon includes E. coli, the Scherichia coli, and other coliforms, Clostridium, Enterococcus faecalis, Lactobacillus species, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Bacteroides species, especially the Bacteroides fragilis, Fusobacterium, Eubacterium, Bifidobacterium, and a fungus that is Candida albicans. Now let's talk about the normal flora of genital urinary system. In genital system, mainly these uh, microorganisms are present in vagina, which is also called the birth canal. E. coli, along with other coliforms, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Lactobacillus species, Cornibacterium species, Bacteroides species, especially Frigilis and a fungus called Candida albicans. And urinary system, um, especially these bacteria are present in urethra. They include coliforms and maybe sometimes E. coli is present, but not mainly. Staphylococcus epidermidis and Cornibacterium. Effects of normal flora. Effects um, can be positive and negative. Let's start talking about the positive ones first. Um, a normal flora is important for developing immune system. It produces certain vitamins like vitamin K that helps in coagulation by producing certain a clotting factors and also vitamin B which is important in digestion. The gut microbiota aids in digestion which means it can help digest uh, um, certain saturated fatty acids and lipids and it can also lead to colonization resistance to pathogens. What does the, the term colonization resistance mean? It means that if some foreign pathogen enters into the body, it wants uh, to form colonies there, but our normal flora will not let the organism to do so. So this is called colonization resistance to pathogens. Negative effects. Um, normal flora causes disease and immunocompromised individuals. They also act as carriers of disease after recovery from a disease. Normal flora can become opportunistic pathogens on changing their locations. For example, if E. coli gets an opportunity to get from GIT into the urinary tract, it will cause a UTI. 
types of infections that normal flora can cause. Number one is endogenous. Endo means from inside. So the normal flora that is normally present in and on our body surface, they get opportunity to cause infection, they will cause it. So this is called opportunistic infection. Exogenous from outside, from a person, including a patient or a carrier, animal. These are called zoonostic infections and from environment. The third infection is nosocomial infection. This is the hospital acquired infection, like microorganisms um, in the hospital will lead to an infection in the human being. Um, this is called a nosocomial infection. And something important I really want to tell you there is that the normal flora of the people having a long stay in hospital is different from the people not living in the hospital. Before reviewing the lecture, I've got a question for you. A 76-year-old woman with prostatic artificial hip joint comes to you complaining of fever and pain in the joint. You are concerned about an infection by Staphylococcus epidermidis. Using your knowledge of normal flora that we've discussed, what is the most likely source of this organism? Mouth, skin, GIT, the gastrointestinal tract, or genitourinary system? You've got just five seconds to answer this question. Five four, three, two, one. Ta-da! The answer is skin. Let's review the lecture. Normal flora has two more names, human microbiome or microbiota. Microorganisms that are permanent residents of the human body are part of the normal flora. Composition of normal flora depends on mode of the delivery, MOD, either SVD or c-section there are two ways of transmission one is vertical the other one is horizontal factors that affect normal flora include age diet location gender immunity and antibiotics etc relationship with hosts are symbiosis including mutualism commensalism parasitism and opportunistic relationship normal flora can be resident means a permanent resident or transient living for some time and ultimate locations of normal flora are eyes especially conjunctiva skin respiratory system gastrointestinal tract gentle urinary tract normal flora has got both positive and negative effects we've discussed that in the video and normal flora can also cause endogenous, exogenous and opportunistic infections and that's it for today's video i hope you got the point and you've answered the question correctly if not watch that video once again that will clear all the confusions you've got and also if you want to connect with me on my socials i've got my instagram i've got my twitter and i rarely upload blogs so do visit if you find some time till next time assalamualaikum